in this video we're going to be determining the most acidic proton in a given structure. So you could very well have multiple protons in one molecule and you have to figure out which particular proton is going to be the most acidic. And you can obviously follow your aria which is the atom effect, the resonance, inductive, orbital, and then you can also have the solvation effect at the very end. The very first thing you want to do in order to determine the most acidic proton is to draw the conjugate base of every single proton after losing every single proton. So if I focus on proton A, so I have proton A here and B, C, and D. So out of those four, I got to figure out which one is going to be the most acidic. And to do that, we're going to get rid of the proton of every single one of those one by one and draw the conjugate base and then figure out which one has the most stable conjugate base. After losing whichever proton, we get the most stable conjugate base. That particular proton is going to be the most acidic. So let's focus on A. So when I, let me just copy this down. When I go ahead and uh, get rid of proton A and draw the conjugate base of that, it would be just a negative charge on this oxygen here. So that's after losing the proton A. So I'll just call this structure A here. And then I want to do the same thing for the B and the same thing for C and D. So let me just go ahead and do that. So that's going to be for the B and make sure when you're doing for the B, you're losing the proton B, not the proton A. So you're still going to have a uh, proton here and this will get the negative charge now. So that's that would be the conjugate base after losing the proton B. And we want to do the same thing for the C and the D. Now let me just copy those down as well. Here, and I will make another one here to get the D as well. So when I lose the C, we'll get a negative charge here. So that's going to be our structure C. And then when I will lose the D, we'll get a negative charge on this oxygen here. Now, if I go back here, and to figure out in which particular case you have the most stable conjugate base. And the first thing you want to look for is the atom, like which particular atom is getting the negative charge. And turns out in every single structure after losing the proton, it's actually going to be your oxygen that gets the negative charge. You get an oxygen here that gets the negative charge here, oxygen got an oxygen for the C and an oxygen for the D as well that gets the negative charge. So atom effect is not going to help. So then you move on to the next effect. And that sometimes uh, you focus on the resonance and some, some, sometimes you focus on the inductive depending on which, which one you really have. And this is just the rough order, the audio. And sometimes they, the resonance inductive may kind of uh, uh, flip back and forth. But usually the resonance takes over the inductive effect. However, not always. Then let's focus on if there is going to be any resonances for any of those conjugate bases. So when I focus on structure A, the conjugate base A, then conjugate base A, you get a negative charge on this oxygen and it's really not conjugated anywhere. So there's no resonance structure. So no resonance on that. Uh, because I cannot really do this. That's not gonna. That's gonna be a big no-no because there's no double bond conjugated with that allylic lone pair to make it move. So uh, just get rid of that part. And what about B? Do we have resonances for B? Well, it turns out this lone pair on this oxygen is just going to be localized only on the oxygen. It doesn't have any double bond close by to be delocated. So this is going to be no resonance again. So that's also no resonance. What about C? When we look at this uh, conjugate base C, we can clearly see that uh, if I maybe change the color here momentarily, 
uh, this double bond right there and this lone pair that's going to be on the oxygen, one of the lone pairs after losing the proton, they're going to be in conjugation with one another. And what that really means, they are they can resonate with one another. So white can I can go ahead and move this down here. And when I move this down here, this double bond is going to get kicked out and it will move down here. So you want to make sure you're able to draw the resonances of that. So when I go ahead and uh, draw this out, let me just copy that down here, and I'll show you how that's going to look like. So for the resonance structures, make sure you have double-headed arrows, and uh, at the end of the day, when this moves, you'll have a double bond here, and obviously one of the lone pairs are being used there. And then you will have a negative charge on this oxygen at this point. And then you want to also look for if you can further move that lone pair. Now it turns out this particular lone pair right there and this double bond right there, they are again in conjugation with one another. So you can have this lone pair and this double bond resonating with one another. So how that's going to look like. We can have this going in here, and then we can have this coming out, and I can draw another resonance structure here. So I'll just copy this down here. So when I draw this second resonance structure, you're going to have a double bond right there. And then you're going to have a negative charge on this oxygen. And those are the only possible resonance structures you have for this particular conjugate base. Now, let's focus on D. So in D, we can clearly see that if this lone pair right there, and this lone pair is going to be delocalized because of the conjugation with that double bond there, so they can resonate with one another. So when this resonates, this is going to come down here, and this uh, double bond or pi bond is going to get kicked out, and it's going to relocate itself onto the carbon as a lone pair. So at the end of the day, your resonance will look like this. Let me just copy that down. So when this double bond, when this lone pair moves and it creates the double bond between the carbon and oxygen, so that's how it's going to look like. And this pi bond is going to relocate itself as a lone pair on that carbon. So that's going to be its resonance structure. Do we have any other resonance structures for this? Well, it turns out that's pretty much you have. You can't really move it anywhere. So there's only two resonance structures, you can say. I can call this resonance structure 1 call this resonance structure 2. So when I look at my conjugate base C, however, they're clearly going to be one structure here, second one here, and the third one here. So you got three resonance structures as opposed to having only two resonance structures for the conjugate base D. And conjugate bases A and B doesn't even have any resonance structure, so they are going to be the least stable. So out of all of those, the conjugate base C is going to be the most stable because of multiple resonance structures. And since it's going to be the most stable, the proton of that conjugate base or the acid of that conjugate base is going to be the most acidic. So at the end of the day, we're going to say this proton is going to be the most acidic proton. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.